So we're in Barcelona at MWC24. I'm here with Greg McCall. He's Chief Networks Officer at BT. Greg, thanks very much for joining us again this year. Always good to see you. You too, right? Pleasure to be here. Okay, so, you know, it's hard to escape the topic of artificial intelligence these days, you know, in the industry in general, in life in general, and here at, uh, at MWC. So uh, for BT, what is the actual impact, the day-to-day -day impact of uh, AI, and particularly uh, machine learning, uh, on network operations at BT, if any? Yeah, so I think um, it, it's probably fair to say, Ray, that we've been using AI and machine learning and automation for quite some time in BT. And we really use it to optimize our operations, our network planning, make sure that we are optimizing everything that we do. And, um, you know, I think one of the main things around AI is how do we use it to ensure that we deliver differentiated services for our customers? And one of the big drives that I've got is how do we enable all of our people to have skills in AI? Because there's a lot of hype about AI replacing people's jobs. My honest view is, is that people with AI will replace people's jobs. And that's what we need to make sure that we do is get everyone upskilled with AI so we can exploit the technology to do great things for our customers. And have things uh, sort of accelerated or advanced, would you say, in the, in the past year with all the buzz around, uh, you know, Gen AI and that sort of lifting up the whole, the whole topic and, and developments and investments across the board? Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, as an example, we have introduced um, something called Code Whisperer, uh, which is um, a tool where um, it, it suggests code to our developers. And we've seen about a 35% um, take up of that uh, across our developer community. And we're seeing about a 12% of all of our code now is written by Code Whisperer. So okay. that's one example. Uh, another example in our operations, what we're seeing is, um, especially around spectral efficiency, you know, how we're using Gen AI, um, to really make sure that those difficult use cases are made a little bit simpler for our operational people. So moving on from that topic, uh, another sort of theme uh, in general in telecom is kind of the, the shifting nature of network architectures uh, that's been going for a time now, but again seems to be accelerating. Uh, is BT working towards a, a, a single network uh, architecture these days? Uh, and if so, what does that look like for your fixed and, and mobile infrastructure? Yeah, so we've been on the journey, as you know, for four or five years, and um, we've made really, really good progress, especially over the last couple of years. Um, a lot of our network functions are now um, hosted on our network cloud, and we've brought together our fixed core and our mobile core into a single instance of that. Um, and we started to see the benefits of that from both an efficiency point of view, but equally, you know, we're seeing those two networks converging so we can deliver different services for our customers as well. And delivering efficiencies and, and cost savings as well, I imagine? Yeah, I mean, from an efficiency point of view, you know, especially um, you know, in our network cloud, we're now delivering um, capability and network functions in hours that used to take us months to deliver. So we're definitely seeing that. But for us, it's less about an efficiency gain per se. It's much more about how do we bring those two networks closer together so we can deliver different services to our customers, um, both within the enterprise and within consumers. So if we can talk a bit more about the network cloud, because you know that's been a, a real key development within BT. And I know if I'm correct, I think it was kind of kick-started by BT Sport when that was first being developed and that, and that really helped to underpin that. But how has it evolved in, in terms of playing a, a broad role across a, a, you know, lots of different aspects of BT? Because you know, it does sound like it's really paid off uh, as, a, as a strategic sort of you know, um, uh, way to go forward. Yeah, um, you know, I feel immensely proud of what the team have achieved. You know, we've been at the bleeding edge of moving network functions and cloudifying those network functions. And you know, as you can imagine, um, that's been a change for the entire ecosystem. It's been a change for the way our people think, uh, the way we've had to train them, um, the way that they've had to adopt and rethink how they do um, their jobs every single day. And um, you know, what we've achieved is, is pretty remarkable. And um, you know, it's, it's quite interesting in this business that um, you know, when you do something 
new and bleeding edge, you became you become the most popular people in town. And um, you know, it, it's quite nice right now. I've got lots of friends who want to learn from us across the industry. And um, you know, I, I, as I say, I just feel really, really proud of what the team have achieved. And we really started to reap the benefits of it um, already. We've got a lot of our network functions migrated. It's already multi-tenanted. And um, you know, like I said before, we're now launching services within hours that used to take us months to deliver. So really, really paying, paying off. Um, it's been a hard journey though. And um, one that I feel has been worth it though. Okay. And how has the sort of the, the suppliers, the vendors, how have they reacted to the way that you're running the network with this cloud? Have they adapted it? Is this something that suited what they were doing or have they had to work really hard to keep up with what you need from them? Yeah, I think it was hard in the early days. You know, I think there was a lot of um, discussion around, you know, is it the right architecture? Should we stay quite proprietary, you know, vertically integrated? Um, but once again, I'd say over the last couple of years, um, I think everyone's realized the move to cloud is critical for our industry. And we've got a brilliant community of partners, um, you know, across across BT and I think they've really lent in. Um, we've worked hand in glove with them and um, you know we've all learned together and we've had to change the way we do things you know whether that be making sure that we have a single pipeline to make it really really simple for us to deploy new capability um, or even just thinking about what the future architecture might look like. How do we work together so that our roadmaps are really really aligned and we've had fantastic support from from all of our vendor communities. Well, I'm sure it pays off for them as well because then they take the experience away uh, to other engagements as well. So, Yeah, they're definitely inviting us to a lot of functions and um, <laughs> to talk about it as well, which right. is great. You, you need to tell me what it's like to have lots of friends. I, I've heard about this, uh, this thing. Um, so uh, in terms of that network cloud, um, you know, one of the other sort of key themes that's really picking up steam now uh, at this show, but in general, is around network APIs and exposing network functions. Does the network cloud play a role in that? And what, what's BT doing in terms of uh, exposing its functionality to, for the development of new applications? Yeah, so, so once again, um, you know, I think the network, you know, if you think about the network cloud, it's really the brain of our network. It sits right at the center of our network. Um, so having that capability allows us to really adopt a much more API-led network. Um, and you know, in 5G era networks are all very software-based. Uh, software um, there's a lot of capability that um, network operators in the past have kept to themselves. And what we are really now embracing is what we call a northbound API, where we can expose that capability to software developers and hopefully build an ecosystem where we can grow that ecosystem exploit the network capability to do amazing things for both our enterprise and our consumer customers. Um, so we, we're getting really good traction. Um, we're working very closely with the GSMA, um, you know, the Open Gateway and Kamara. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that we're actually the first European network that got a um, certified API uh, last week. Um, so, you know, it's, it's real and um, we starting to see the benefits of that as well. Okay, yeah, it's a very interesting development. and. I know there's already buzz around it uh, here at the show already this morning, so it'll be interesting to see how things develop over the next couple of days as well. Um, now, wandering around the show, you know, there's a, you know, AI is so dominant, um, lots of 5G uh, developments, of course, but underpinning a lot of this, of course, is security, which is, you know, always critical to anything that, anything that the operators do. What are the latest developments for BT in terms of uh, how you're tackling network and, and service security? Uh, and would you say that BT is uh, winning the battle? Yeah, I think it's hard to, it's hard to talk about winning the battle. But um, you know, if you think about where BT is in the UK, we are critical to the fabric of the UK. We, we're critical to digitizing the UK um, and, and therefore security is at the heart of everything we do from our network architecture, from our network design, right through to every, every implementation we do. Um, and it, it's, it's really important to say that, you know, when you look at the last six months or so, we've seen 150% growth in potential malicious activity, um, you know, not just within our network, because we look at this across the UK. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it remains really important. Within BT, we've got about 3,000 um, engineers that are analyzing the network. We're seeing significant growth in the network, not only on 
good traffic, but bad traffic as well. So analyzing that every single day and making sure that we stay on top of it is, is super, super important. We have also um, adopted new technologies. So AR, we've spoken about quite a lot. You know, that plays a critical role in our security operations as well. Um, and then quantum is, is new technology that I think we're also getting really excited about. Um, and that's great to be able to protect ourselves from it. But if it gets in the hands of the wrong actors, um, you know, that also creates a new threat that we're going to need to stay ahead of as well. Sure. Well, that's something I'm hoping to see a bit more and hear a bit more about uh, at, at the sector uh, at the show this year, the quantum safe networking. Because at the moment, it seems to be restricted to just a few companies, you know, making headway, BT being one of them. But are you, are you seeing more operators getting involved, do you think? Is that something that others are talking to you about? Yeah, it's, it's hard, you know, in, in this game, when it's technology that's probably not going to come to fruition for five or six years, you know, how do you lay the trails now to ensure that it's there? So, um, so we're seeing a lot of um, interest from um, our partner community um, and some, some of our customers, our enterprise customers, particularly in the financial sector, um, you know, where they see this as a, a threat and an opportunity to deal with that threat. Um, but I suppose internally what we need to do is continue to create the excitement around it because trying to sell a service that is only going to be useful in four or five years um, is, is more difficult. Um, but you know, within BT we always take a long term view on technology and um, I think it's really, really important that we continue to do the work in quantum. Um, you know, I would predict that if it's not this year, next year quantum will be a headline figure in the same way as AI is probably going to be this year. Um, here, so you know, I think it's important that we all work towards that. And there's some really exciting um, developments happening there, and the community is definitely getting larger. Well, Greg, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure you've got your back to back for the few days you're here. So great to see you, and thanks for the update on what's happening at BT. Thanks, Ray. Always a pleasure. I look forward to catching up soon.